Good day to all of you. Welcome to a new broadcasting on Waiting on God. This is your pastor, Yeti. Today, you and me are going to go in our journey waiting with the heart. Be strong and let your heart take courage. All you wait for the Lord. Psalm 31, verse 24. The words are nearly the same as in our last meditation. And you know you can always go back to see where we signed off and move from there. Because it's most of the time a week in between, right? So, but I gladly return to the team to press home a much needed lesson for all who desire to learn what waiting for God is. The lesson is this. It is with the heart that we must wait for God. Let your heart take courage. All our waiting depends upon the state of the heart. As a human heart is, so is it before God. The person is he or she is before God. We can advance no further or deeper into the holy place of God's presence than our heart is prepared for by the Holy Spirit. The message is, let your heart take courage, all who wait for the Lord. The truth appears so simple. Some may ask, doesn't everyone admit this? And where is the need for insisting on it specifically? It is because many Christians have no sense of the great difference between the religion of the mind and the religion of the heart. And the former is more diligently developed than the latter. They don't know how infinitely greater the heart is than the mind. This is one of the chief reasons for the feebleness of our Christian life. Only as this is understood can we wait on God to bring its full blessing. A text in Proverbs may help us to comprehend this, speaking of a life in the fear and favor of God. And Solomon said, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not unto your own understanding. Proverbs 3, verse 5. And my dear friends, we can use this every day. We cannot lean on our own understanding. Well, maybe we'll say, well, I have understanding enough to make a decision. But that's right, it's good. I have enough to make a certain kind of a journey. I don't need God for that, or I don't need... Well, that's maybe right too. But as we, as Christians, are agreed in following Christ, there is a certain kind of a discipline and an obedience we have to follow, right? And of course... God created us in his own image that the divine is in us and to help us as we come to him. Some people come later in life to Christ. So that God is the one that put creativity, that put a brain functioning our brain to allow our brain to work it's not that everything will fall from heaven right we have to use our brain we have to grab our our in i mean our intuitive 
We need to use everything that God put in us. And as adults, and still growing, and still learning, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> a good cup of coffee would help, I think, but anyway. So to trust in the Lord and don't lean on your own understanding, that is a mystery that goes on in our life continuous, continuously, continuously. It's making us in the transformation where we allow ourselves in that heart is waiting and listening and still doing what we need to do in our day. In all religion, we have to use these two powers. The mind must gather knowledge from God's word and prepare the food for the heart so the inner life can be nourished. But here is a terrible danger, leaning on our own understanding and trusting in our comprehension of divine things. People imagine that if they are occupied with the truth, the spiritual life will be strengthened automatically. But this is by no means the case. The understanding deals with concepts and images of divine things. But it cannot reach the real life of the soul. Hence the command, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. It is with the heart that people believe and connects with God. It is in the heart that God is giving His Spirit as the presence and power of God. And so as the presence and the power of God works in us, in our religion, it is the heart that must trust and love and worship and obey. My mind is not able to create or maintain the spiritual life within me. The heart must wait for God to work in me. Even in the physical life, this is so. My reason may tell me what to eat and drink and how the food nourishes me. But in eating, my reason can do nothing. The body has its organs for that special purpose. Reason may tell me what God's words say but it can do nothing to feed the soul on the bread of life the heart alone can do this by its faith and trust in God a person may study the nature and effects of food or sleep when he or she wants to eat or sleep he or she sets aside his, their thoughts and study and they uses the power of eating or sleeping. Even so, when the Christian has studied or heard God's word, he must cease from his thoughts and put no trust in them. He must waken his heart to open itself before God and seek the living fellowship with him. This is the blessedness of waiting upon God, that I confess the deficiency of all my thoughts and efforts and bow my heart before him in holy silence, as I trust him to renew and strengthen his work in me. And this is the lesson of our text. Let your heart take courage. All you are wait, you are waiting for the Lord. Remember, the difference between knowing with the mind and believing with the heart. Beware of temptation to lean on your own understanding with its clear, strong thoughts. They only help you to know what the heart must get from God. Your thoughts are only images and shadows. Let your heart take courage, all you who wait for the Lord. Present it before Him as that wonderful part of your spiritual nature in which God reveals Himself and by which you can know him. Cultivate the greatest confidence 
that God is working there by His Holy Spirit. Let your heart wait at times in perfect silence and quiet. In its hidden depths, God will work. Be sure of this and just wait on Him. Continually give your whole heart with its secret workings into God's hands. He wants the heart and takes it, and as He dwells in it, be strong and let your heart take courage, all you who wait for the Lord. My dear friends, may your soul wait only upon God. May your days in your plans combine it that God is the one who plans for you. Waiting upon God is listening and working together. Again, it's not just sitting there and just waiting when everything falls from heaven. It is by step and step you move that God will reveal or things will happen. You will see changes in your life if you really are in the school. I use the word school of obedience. This is a very high understanding this is a mystery that in the knowledge and in the power and in obedience there is a transformation that God is doing reason why because he gave himself completely for you he gave it all and he's asking to wait on him to wait on Him with, with all that is in you, to wait in all that He gives to you in your life, with your family, with your brothers and sisters, and with a stranger outside. This is your world. My soul wait upon God. Yes, you wait. And I have to wait. That He fills your life with his love, hope, and peace, and joy, and understanding. And let the words of Solomon stay there. Trust in the Lord, and don't lean on your own understanding. It's so easily made a decision. It's so easily that the mistake will be there. And I don't say that you make good decisions that you're looking for not making a mistake, that you want to use your brain very well, and that your heart is in, in balance with your mind, and that's all fine. But as we put Christ right in the center of our life, you will see that the impossible will become possible. Don't run over your life pause and see what happens if you wait on the Lord may God bless you may he guide you wherever you go in this world and remember the world needs you the world is in chaos the world needs your love your healing when you stretch out to others you can touch them, and you can touch them spiritually. You don't even touch because of what we are now in our COVID. But you know what? This all doesn't matter as long as we just pour out our lives and waiting on the Lord and trust Him. May you be blessed. Have a wonderful day. Bye.